What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host BJ Dell and today is the next video in my 26 part video series where I use the iPad and procreate and draw all 26 letters of the alphabet as an animal that starts with that letter. Today's the letter F and I'll be showing you how to draw this cute flamingo from start to finish with no time lapse. Today's suggestion comes to you from Creating with Wingless Angel who left the suggestion of Flamingo down in the comments, which brings me to the point, if you've got an idea or a suggestion for an upcoming letter I haven't covered yet, definitely leave that down below and you might see your idea come to life in one of my upcoming videos. But today, it's all about the Flamingo, so let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so starting out, I'm using a 4,000 pixel by 4,000 pixel 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my brushes today, I'm gonna be using my Essential Creator Set for Procreate. It's available on Gumroad. Links down in the description for this. It also comes with a three and a half hour long tutorial too, so a bunch of value for the price. Uh, we're gonna start out using the Brainstorm Sketch Brush, switch over to a few of these others throughout the tutorial. And then for my color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made, so if you wanna download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's tutorial, you can get that for free if you go to my website, bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page. It's also linked down below. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First thing, I wanna make the F here for our kind of guide. So we're gonna come up here to our actions menu. We're gonna go over to add and we're going to add text. We're gonna hit F on our keyboard and we're gonna double tap our letter, tap on our font here to change this over to Arial and then our style is gonna be bold. Then I'm gonna grab the arrow and with uniform and snapping selected, I'm just gonna drag this out to make it bigger. And then we want it centered, so we wanna look for those orange lines both horizontally and vertically. So we've got that and we've got our F. I'm gonna go ahead now and drag this down below layer one. We're gonna hit N for blend mode to bring up this menu and we're gonna drop our opacity down to Maybe about 15%. I want to use this as a guide. We just don't want it to be too dark. And then I think too, the crossbar here for the F, I'm going to drop that down just a little bit. So using the select tool and freehand, I'm just going to lasso this. I'm going to grab my arrow then and drop this down. And you'll see now this rasterized the text and it lost the change we made to our opacity. So we just need to drop that back down. All right, so with that done then, we're ready to start sketching. So I kind of see this as being a profile view of the flamingo. We're gonna go to layer one to sketch. Brainstorm sketch brush, and I wanna have the opacity set pretty low. I've got 10% set for the opacity on the, the brush here. So with the profile view, I kind of see the, the head of the flamingo gonna be in here. So I'll just draw an oval for the head and then how a flamingo stands on one leg kind of kicks up that other leg we'll have that other leg be the this crossbar of the f so we'll kind of have this come out this will be that first leg so it's almost kind of like a z shape here we'll have it come back up then back down and then this will be kind of the the toes of the foot coming back up just like that all right so now that we've got that one we can go ahead and put the the back leg in here so i'm just gonna do a straight line here and a straight line here and then kind of an oval down here to represent where the foot's gonna go. And then we can start to fine tune that. Just throw in the toes here for that foot. All right. Now with the, the head done here, we can start working on the beak. So we're gonna have the beak kind of come out and curve back down and around. Just like this. And then up here, kind of have the bottom of the head curve back up and around into a cheek. 
so that that way we can kind of have a smile here to split that beak up to. Just like that, and then a line here. So of course, we've got that the different colors in the beak. We've got the kind of blackish gray here, and then we've got the yellowish orange of the beak up here. Then pull the beak back into the head. Okay, now that we've got that set, before we do any more details in there, let's kind of work on the body here. So usually with a flamingo, of course, if we've got the head here, you've got the beak here coming down. The neck, you've got this nice kind of S curve to the neck, which is really kind of one of the main attributes of, of a flamingo. Since we've got it in this position though, we don't have the luxury of having that upright S shape there. So we're gonna kind of have to fake it here and still have a nice curve. So it reads like the flamingo. So we need to have a nice curve on that neck as it comes into the head, just like that. We'll pull the, the bottom of the neck there. So this is gonna be then when it comes into the body so we can kind of draw a, almost like a teardrop shape here for the body. And this front part will be the belly as it comes around. We'll also have these kind of haunches here where the legs come into. Just like that. And then this neck will come in and around to this back wing here. We'll do some lines here for the feathers of the wing as it comes up. Maybe some more feathers up top here. I think that looks pretty good. Finally then to kind of finish this off here in the front, we'll get an oval here for the eye and then kind of add some details in here for this get the pupil in here kind of looking back there to the the back side and then maybe get an eyebrow here at the top kind of a fold or crease there as the beak meets the the head and just kind of darkening up some of these lines. There we go. So there's our sketch, really rough, really loose, but really that's what I always preach that the sketch phase is to keep it loose. It's not to try to get every single detail in there and make everything perfect because we're just gonna go back over these lines when we ink, which is the next step. So taking too much time in this is really just a waste because you're gonna go back and redo everything anyways. So just getting that loose feel is really what we want. So let's come up here to the layers now. Let's turn off our, our uh, F and we can see what we're left with with our sketch. And now we're ready to begin the inks. So to do this, let's go ahead and make a new layer on top of our sketch. And then once again, we wanna drop the opacity of our sketch just like we did with our letter. So I'm gonna drop this down in the 30s. We wanna be able to see it, we just don't want it to be too dark. With that done then, we're gonna come back up here to our brush library and then I'm gonna select the smooth anchor. We've got a bunch of really curved lines here, so I'm gonna adjust this just a little bit. So I'm gonna tap on this to bring open the brush studio. Then we're gonna to come to stabilization and I'm gonna turn streamline all the way up. It's gonna help us kind of smooth out our lines and we go too slow and we got a little bit of handshake in there and it's not going to show in our lines. All right, with that done then, we're ready to start the inks. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Now, especially when you're doing inks, if you want nice, crisp, clear lines, I really suggest zooming in as far as possible if you're drawing digitally. The better it looks zoomed in like this, the better it's gonna look when you're zoomed out. And then we're ready to start. Size-wise, I've got this preset as the 7% default. And then I'm just gonna start bringing in these lines around. You see, as I kind of bring that up, I kind of slowed down there. And if we didn't have that stabilization turned on, that would really have caused quite a bit of a, a shake there. 
So that's one thing that the, the Streamline is really good for. And you'll see here on the inside, I'm using a lighter line weight. I reserve kind of the, the heavier lines for the outside. And then when I get here on the inside, that's where the, the lighter lines come in. Bring this line around. I'm gonna do that one more time, but I'm gonna come from this way and I wanna overlap a little bit here. So I'll show you this technique that I use, come up to the layers and make a new layer. I've talked about this before in my videos, doing this curve line here for the head. My palm rejection is going crazy right now. Uh, so during this curve line for the head, drawing it this way like this, my arm and my hand don't necessarily go this way naturally. This way feels a lot more natural, but here I'm gonna have to stop before I go over top of this line. With doing a new layer like this, I can actually draw this line now have full control over where it begins and ends and the flow of the line. And then I can come in here holding down my eraser to select the same brush that I'm using to draw with. I can then just erase those overlaps. And since this is on a different layer, I don't have to worry about erasing that line that I just did. It makes it super nice and super easy. And then once you're done, you can just pinch those back together or you can leave them open because if we do this next part let's go back down to this layer here layer three we can select that layer and with our brush then we can go over this one for the eyebrow here just like that we can kind of fine-tune where those lines meet up and Get that a little bit sharper. Then we can go back in now to this layer four with our eraser and we can erase those overlaps without hitting that line that we just did. So just a, a little trick there, makes it super nice and super easy. We can pinch them together then once we're done. And if you wanna repeat this process, you can make another new line there. Same thing here, doing these lines. Now we can finish out that stroke further down without having to worry about hitting those other lines. I'm gonna hold down in the background now to select white and we're gonna throw in some highlights here in the eyes, just like that, and then select black again. And there's the head. Okay, I'm gonna come up here, pinch those together again, and then we'll make another new layer for the neck here. So once again, I'm starting further back, so I've got more control over the line. And then I can go back in with my eraser, erase those overlaps, and I don't have to worry about hitting those parts that I've already done. Kind of fine tune in the taper here. And then I can go ahead, pinch those together, do another new layer here. This one, I really didn't have to do another new layer because I'm not gonna bring this one all the way around. So I can just stop there if I want. I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch those together now. And then I can make another new layer for the neck, which actually, I think I'm gonna do the neck before the belly here so that I've got this where I want it. So this is on that new layer again. Get the neck in there. Reese the overlaps here. And then pinching those together and another new layer. Then you can come in here and connect these. Once again, then using the eraser, you can kind of fine tune where those meet. I'm gonna zoom in here and twist a little bit. This is where, once again, the, the natural way that your arm moves comes into play. This is the most kind of comfortable position for this line. So twisting and zooming in like this really allows me to kind of do that naturally. And that's what we have. Now I think this line with the curve though, this is where the, the thought process comes in when you're drawing from the, the sketch phase to the inking phase. I think that really needs the same curve as the top here rather than just that curve. 
You see how this kind of comes around here. I think we need that same curve there. So if I start down here further, kind of bring that up. I think that looks a little bit more natural with the, the curves we already have in here. Pull this back here. And then coming down to the bottom layer now, I can bring this line up. And erase into that taper. Once again, twisting the canvas here. This is a lot more comfortable to do it this way. And then going back down to erase that overlap. And I think that looks a lot more natural. So now, pinching those together, you can see that everything's back on one. Another new layer again. We'll get these haunches in here. Erase the overlaps. On the same layer then, we can start to pull up the feathers here, and then also these feathers. Just like that. Back to the layers, pinching those together so everything's all in one, and then another new layer, then for the legs here. We'll bring this line across first. We'll kind of have an overlap there. And then bring this line in and around up to the top. I'm going to stop then because I'm going to bring this line in here. And we'll connect these then. I'm going to zoom in and twist again. And this is something that will come natural to you once you kind of realize and, and find the way that you're most comfortable with drawing lines. Twisting the canvas and zooming in like this will do wonders to making lines feel more natural. It's going to feel more organic and it's not going to feel like you're fighting against yourself. I'll do some overlaps here where the legs crease in. back up okay looks good I'll pull back here and finish this toe over on this side just like that and pull them back out you can see where we're at and now for this final leg now with this here usually I would have let's say like a bend right so you got your knee and a bend the way that this leg worked though, of course we had to kind of play with the anatomy and the crease here has to be a little bit higher than where it usually would be. So I think putting the knee down here is gonna make this upper portion look too short over here. So I'm just gonna make it straight. And I think that's gonna to lead to more believable design. It's not gonna look wonky. And it might look wonky and you don't know why it looks wonky. Uh, so that's why I decided just to, to go here and go straight with this one. I think it's a wiser choice. And pull them back then, you can kind of see what we're left with. So there's our outlines. Let's turn off our sketch. Let's pinch together our lines layer. And you can see exactly what we're left with. And now here, if you want to, you could go in and add some extra details. So pulling in tighter here, we could add in some you know, dots here for some texture across the beak. Uh, if you want to, you know, do some extra feathers around certain areas here. If you wanted to draw in some extra lines around the eyes for detail. This is where I kind of decide, okay, what else does it need? I'll also go back in after I've done the, the color flats and the shadows and highlights as well, just to, to kind of fine tune stuff and add from there. But right now I think we're good. So there's our outline. Let's go ahead now and move on to adding the color flats. So to begin the color flats, we're gonna come up here to our layers menu. We're going to tap our lines layer. We're gonna set this as reference. So what this is gonna do is it's going to allow us to drag and drop colors on new layers 
Using the layer three or lines layer is kind of like a coloring book guide as far as where they go to. So if we come down under layer three now and make a new layer, then coming up to our color palette, we've got this light pink color first. We're gonna drag and drop that in for the body. So there we go, really quick, really easy. You can see the benefits of using this technique. Now another new layer here, we'll go back up to our color palette. We've got the yellowish orange for the beak. So we'll throw that in there. Then we can also go ahead and throw this in for the legs. I'm gonna hit continue filling here because instead of dragging and dropping now, we can just tap inside of each of these areas and they fill them in. Back up to the layers menu, another new layer. Back to the color palette, we've got this gray color for the beak, the bottom here. And then on that same one, let's go ahead and do the eyebrow, this dark pink. We're gonna use that for the shadows, but we can use that for the eyebrow too. Back to our layers menu then, another new layer. We'll select white. That'll be for the eye. And then one more new layer here. And we've got this kind of seafoam green color. That'll be for the iris, which I'm gonna zoom in tight so we can drag and drop that in. If you stay zoomed out for little areas like that, you're probably gonna miss them the first time. You'll hit the lines. And if you hit the lines, then it's going to do that. If you're zoomed out though, you might not notice that it did that. And then if you're further down in the process and you notice, everything's gonna be screwed up. So it's uh, really beneficial to zoom in to, to get that color drop in there. And there we go. We've got all of our colors laid in. Color flats are done, so now it's time to move on and add the shadows and the highlights. So to begin shadows and highlights, we're gonna come back up to our layers menu. Let's start with the, the body itself, so the, the pink. We're gonna make a new layer on top of this. And then we're gonna tap this and we're gonna set this as clipping mask. So what this is gonna do is it's going to allow us to color in on this layer and it's only gonna show up on the areas that are colored in on the layer that it's clipped to below it, so this pink. So if we color down here, nothing's gonna show up. If we color in here, nothing's gonna show up. With that done then, back to the color palette, we're gonna choose this dark pink color. With that selected then, I'm gonna come back up to my brush library and I'm gonna go to soft rendering. And we'll start out with this preset size of 7%. And I'm gonna zoom in here and start to get underneath here. So with this, I see the uh, light source coming in from this top right-hand corner. So we've got shadows coming back down here and here. And on this side, highlights are gonna be here and here on top of the cheek and on top of the, the leg and, and foot there. So hopefully that makes sense. So we'll continue to, to color this in. I'm gonna up the size now to the next setting and we'll start to pull around the belly and the bottom here and just kind of blending it in as we go up. Once I'm done with that then, I don't want any here on this edge so I'm gonna hold down the eraser to select that same brush that we're using. I'm going to drop the size here and I'm going to erase that overlap on the top of the wing. If you're not happy with the way that it flows too, you can also hold down the smudge tool and you can bring in the smudge to kind of blend that in as well. I'm going to go back to the eraser and drop the size down to about two and I'm going to pull a little bit Actually, we'll go up to three. Pull a little bit of the shadows away from the front. Just like that, so you have a nice value change between those. All right, back to my brush. I'm gonna continue this around. Actually, I'm gonna make it the bigger size here, the 28%. Start to bring in Shadows here along the bottom and the back. Just like that. And then I'm gonna drop this down to about 3%. We'll bring in the shadows here underneath these feathers. And 
once again here we can use the smudge tool to kind of fine tune that a little bit and blend them in a little bit more back to the brush then I'm gonna pull a shadow here whoops bigger size here the seven actually let's go the 15% uh, here on the bottom of the neck we're gonna pull that around and then back to the eraser I'm gonna erase the overlap here back to the brush and the lower 7% one we'll use this for this cheek at the bottom So up the size here to the 15, kind of pull it up around the back of the head. Just like that. And then down to about 5%, I'll start to pull in underneath the eyebrow. Just like that. Okay. Back to the eraser now, I'm gonna hit the sides of these feathers on the wing. I'll also bring some extra highlights in there in a second. Now I'm gonna hold down on the background and select white. With the same brush, we're gonna drop this down to 3%. We'll use this across the front for the highlights. So the head. And that little overlap there, the beak, that connects. So bring around on the cheek here. Top of the cheek. Up this to the 7%. Get a little bit here along the neck and the back. And dropping this down to the 2%. Going to hit the sides of the wings here just like that and then the eraser just to erase any overlaps all right back to the brush seven percent again we'll hit the front of the belly here as it comes down also hit the front of this wing Making it bigger than 15%, I'm just gonna hit the center of the belly here as well. And then we'll do that same technique here inside the cheek. All right, looks good. So we've got the pink done then. Let's go ahead, come back up to our layers menu. We've got layer five, which is the orange part of the beak and the legs. So let's make a new layer. We're gonna tap that, set that as clipping mask. Coming to our color palette then, we're gonna go with this orange right here. And then with this, I'm gonna switch over to the soft hat shader. We'll drop this to about 3% and we'll see where we're at with that. That's not bad, let's go a little bit bigger, maybe 8%. That's a little bit better there. So I'm gonna bring this soft hat shader around here. Blend this in so we've got a nice shift and the values there, just like that. Then we're gonna come back up here and we've got this yellow. We're gonna use that for the brighter highlights then and hit around the top, just like that. We'll do the same thing now to the legs. So back to that orange, still using that soft hatch. I'm gonna drop this down to about 3% now and we'll hit this backside and underneath and I'm going really really soft right now as far as pressure goes I'm not applying a lot of pressure here we got that one there and then this back one here along the bottom and then this one here which I'm going to use the eraser here and pull away some of that from the top on both of those. Now back to the color palette and selecting that yellow, dropping this down further to about 2%. We'll hit the front here. 
And then using the smudge tool, I'm going to blend that in where those meet. Back to the brush. And hitting those areas that would be highlighted. All right, just like that. Now back to the color or the layers menu. We've got layer six, which is that black and then the eyebrow. So we're going to make a new layer on top of there. Clipping mask again. We're going to go ahead and select the black here and still using that soft hat shader. Make this the 4%. Hit the underside of this here. And the bottom. Just ever so soft. Using the smudge, smudge it in a little bit. And then back to the color palette, we've got this gray here. We'll use that for the areas that would be highlighted. Get those in there and then maybe kind of a shine there in the center as well, which we can then use the smudge tool to kind of blend that in a little bit. Looks good. Finally, then we're going to select the white, and then we're going to go back to our brush and soft rendering. Drop this down to about one percent. Zoom in here and get the edge. Actually, we we'll go two or three percent. Get the edge of this eyebrow. And get a highlight across there. And then finally, we've got the eye itself. So. Selecting blue on our color palette and then coming to layer seven, new layer on top. You guessed it, clipping mask. I'm going to set this to the 7%. We'll bring a bit of that blue there into the eye. Then we're going to switch the color to that darker green color and then we're going to use that on the iris. So if we go to layer eight, and with this one, we can actually just alpha lock this one instead of making a new layer in clipping mask. So this kind of works like clipping mask, but it draws it directly on the same layer. So you can't use the eraser here. It would erase everything. And I'm going to drop the size down to the 3% and we'll just bring in this color from the bottom, kind of fade it up and the same thing here from the top. So it's got that nice value change between those and pulling back out, then you can see what we're left with. So this is the point where I was talking about earlier then, if you wanna go ahead and make any changes, fine tune anything, add any of the extra little marks. On this, I think the uh, layer 10, the highlights and shadows on the beak, I'm gonna go back in with the eraser here and I'm gonna pull a little bit here from the bottom and right here, so we've got a Nice shift in those values. That makes that pop a little bit more. And anything else that you can see that you need, switching back to black and then on the, the lines layer here, that's where I would go back in with the smooth anchor. Turning off the streamline now. You go in and do just, you know, random things. If you wanted to do some cross hatching here, you could do some cross hatching across the beak. Cross hatching is nice to save for after because if you're dragging and dropping the colors in, you would have to go in and you know tap each of those areas inside or you just have to go in and color them in by hand. Uh, but saving this to the last kind of frees up you having to do that. I'm still on the same brush here, we can add in some extra you know, curve lines here. Whatever you think that it might need just to said add in more details and make it more interesting without overdoing it I guess is you know the key finally then I'm just gonna go ahead and make another new layer here we'll sign this guy and then we will be done with today's tutorial so there you go the letter F as flamingo appreciate you watching thanks so much 
Do me a favor, if you liked today's video, if you found it helpful or useful, definitely give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already too, so you can get alerted when I post new videos. That'll happen when you hit that notifications button. So hit that bell as well. Uh, let's see, what else? If you follow along with any of my videos, number one, thanks. Number two, I really urge you to post any of your work online. Uh, if you're on Instagram or Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, uh, threads, definitely post it there. Tag me at BJ Dell so I can check them out. Love seeing your guys' work and what you can do based around these tutorials. So very cool stuff that you guys come up with. And thanks so much for following along and for sharing. Like I said, too, at the beginning of the video, if you guys have any other ideas for upcoming letters, if there's an animal that starts with that letter you want to see, leave it down in the comments and you might see your idea and your suggestion brought to life in one of these upcoming videos. So thanks for participating there. I appreciate it. As for me, I can also be found online, bjdell.com. And that's it for today's video. Until next time, keep creating.